This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio in Beachview, PA. That camera is off kilter, but hey, here we are. Um, we, of course, uh, just a program note, you guys may notice we we're a day late on everything. Uh, we did uh, uh, take the day off, uh, take a moment, uh, because we did want to observe a little bit of a Blackout Tuesday and kind of observe and kind of take a day because a lot of stuff of course has happened in the last week of course we are um um very uh, uh, aware of the situation with george floyd and everything going on i've been watching everything happen including here in pittsburgh and uh and have a lot of feelings on it and uh and and i hope what we can do you know when we do these shows especially the usual ones we do on tuesday night with this and the mayhem show uh i usually hope for it to be something to detach people from the things going on in the world but I feel um, very strongly that uh, we can't really detach from this. This is kind of the problem that got us to this point. So I feel uh, we're going to have a little bit of discussion today uh, with our guests with a very uh, specific angle. And uh, I hope I hope in the future, whether this show or other things on Sorgatron Media, uh, has always been my personal mission, um, kind of unstated mission, to help elevate voices that um, need to be elevated so it's not just us telling you stuff all the time. Uh, so we try to have a little bit of variety to that with this and other projects, and I hope to continue that and uh, may bring a little bit of more of that uh, as appropriate for the framework of uh, this show into the awesome cast. Um, please um, continue to support. Uh, we are thinking of all of you guys out there uh, with everything that's going on, and uh, I, you know, really appreciate um, our, 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 our crew out there, our awesome cast uh, friends out there and beyond, wherever you are. Um, wherever you come from, you know, just want to put that out there before we go. So we're going to try to have a little bit of fun. We're going to have a little bit of serious conversation. I got a pre-recorded uh, conversation with my buddy Chachi for Put a Pickle on it. If that doesn't put a smile on your face, I don't know what will at this point. But in the meantime, we do have a hell of a crew here on the awesome cast. I have with us right now, uh, first of all, from Big Bank International Esquire. He is uh, uh, live from his 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 home work environment in studio c in the big d of dormont john chichilla is with us i think i heard a ding i hope he's still with us you, you hear me yeah you i hear got me you now. i got you i am working. i am i am here are you are you back on your old computer it looks a little different i'm not actually on my old computer what's weird is for some weird reason a portion of my dock did not work when i plugged in and i was in a hurry to join the show it's fine. It's so, fine. It's Wednesday. I threw everybody off. So <laughs> yeah. Uh good. I glad you I glad you could join us here tonight, sir. Thank you. It's good to uh, be here. Also back with us, of course, is the Dutters. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. From Studio How's D. You? <laughs> that D in the big C. It's even the big C. <laughs> and that's Crafton, okay? That's not a reference. Or is it? I mean, it's a double meaning, I guess, but uh <laughs> <laughs> um awesome and also with us uh we uh, have some uh well, this is the journalist episode uh because we do want to have a conversation about uh um, things going on with journalism uh, there's a big tech angle for how everything's being captured with all the protests with all the george floyd black lives matter protests so i want to have a good uh, discussion with some experts on that first of all back with us i know so soon uh although very appropriate because i think this is officially the week uh, of our 10th anniversary for the awesome cast and i believe he was the first person on here mike pound from the post gazette is joining us on the show mike how you doing i'm doing well and that is that i i was on the first show yes yes um i, I don't know if this is the 10th is this the 10th anniversary week I, we're usually like somewhere around the ces first second week of awesome cast so i'm gonna ah, just say it okay is. we're pushing okay. everything to the 500th episode in a couple weeks but to, okay. to okay. celebrate and hoping like 
people can gather by doubt by then. Uh, but <laughs> right. uh, Mike, thank you for joining us. I, I wish it was under better circumstances. I am. I'm. I'm happy to be able to help with this one. Fantastic. And also, I'm sure he's been on one time or another. He does so. Ma- he's on so many of the shows on the Sorgatron Media Network. Uh, former executive producer with KDKA, and of course, uh, uh, you know, has some friends that were involved in some uh, incidents over the last uh, couple of days. Uh, Matt Carlins is joining us. Did I get your tagline right? Did I get the official? Uh, the officially official. Uh, <laughs> you got the well, former part right. That's the okay. Important thing okay. Right there, so. <laughs> the former. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I think this is the first time I've ever been on this show. Okay. Uh, and I have been grinding in the Sorgatron Media Empire for so many years and to finally reach this, this is the crown jewel. And uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Excellent. So again, we are going to have a serious conversation, but I do want to, uh, uh, you know, let's, hey, let's talk about some positive to begin with. Um, and there is some positive with the negative and some great things going on around uh, uh, things going on uh, with the world events right now. But in the meantime, please go check it out. I'm just going to do the brief version. Check out everything awesomecast.com. Follow us on the Twitter. We're streaming a lot of places. Actually, we're streaming on Instagram for the first time because Alex Lindsay said we should all break the terms and do that right now. And that's a whole other conversation. I'll tell you maybe <laughs> next week after I find out if all this works tonight because I literally found out about it an hour ago and kind of have it working in my head. is so big on my phone right now. That doesn't help. Um, but <laughs> go check that out. And, and above all, I do want to um, throw out a shout out. Thank you to our patrons. Patreon supporters that do support this show and have been even through all the craziness going on over the last several months. Uh, our friends at the Coffee Club, Matt Weller, John DeGore, and John Carmen, and our friends at the fan of the show level, Michael Fedor, pghmuseums.org, and Dave Podner is our newest Patreon supporter. Thank you, everybody. If you guys do want to support this show, you can do that over at patreon.com slash awesomecast, where we had a discussion with Matt Carlins about how he found some very um, special technology behind a a refrigerator or something in the back of his garage, and now he's using it, (laughs) and now asks me all the questions about it. So Clean your garage, people. You never know what you're going to find. You never know what kind of (laughs) Apple device that you didn't know was there for the last year and a half and is now in your possession and of use to you. So that's our lesson. I know what I'm I'm doing this weekend. I'm going to clean the garage. (laughs) That's what's going to happen. I I wish I had a garage. I mean, I didn't know that. This is a benefit I didn't know about owning a garage. All right, guys. First of all, let's get into our awesome things of the week. I kind of we just kind of last minute said we're going to do them, um, but I, who who is prepared with an awesome thing of the week? I am prepared, and I just I sent you a link. I don't know if it's in the it's in the chat for the meeting. Um, this is uh, this is a, a, a definitely a low tech awesome thing of the week, but it's the the, the purpose here is twofold. Uh, number one, restaurants are, are going to start reopening. Obviously, people in the service sector uh, have been hit super hard mm-hmm. um, with the, with all the shutdowns. So they're going to be anxious to get back in business and 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 making money and doing it and, and doing it safely. Um, and then the other thing with this list in particular, and the link is to a um, to a story that the Post Gazette uh, put together in February about uh, black owned restaurants. In and around town, and in, you know, mostly in Allegheny County, I think there are a couple that are outside the county. Um, when this was published, I, I freaked out because there's a, a ton of stuff that I have not been to. Um, we've managed to try a couple before everything got closed. So, uh, it, my, my suggestion is this: take a look at this list. Uh, obviously, you want to check and see when when restaurants are going to be opening again, everything. But it is a, a thorough look at what uh, what these guys do, where they are, what their specialties are. Go pick a place and and mm-hmm. and um you know help out someone help out a black owned business yeah, that's a that's a thing this week for sure uh help out people who've been working in the service sector because they all need it um and man go go out leave your house safely obviously and go get something good to eat because man I could I could use that right now um and uh, you know the takeout is takeout is awesome and and I've been happy to do that but going out to a restaurant sounds pretty cool right now. It, it it does. I, it, it, as somebody who is like pretty much tired of takeout <laughs> at this point uh, and eating in my car, but um, no. It, <laughs> so I so I'm starting to see kind of along with that. Uh, we I can't mm-hmm. remember the name of the place. It's like something Cove or something. It's over off uh, Library Road. I know I watched Midget Wrestling there at one point uh, in the bar. Um, but they have these circles out and we're like are they repainting their 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 driveway or something and i realized that's all spacers for them to put tables out when they're allowed this weekend right yes. i was like yes. oh there you go so i thankfully we're going into summer i guess so uh, we'll see mm-hmm. what kind of other inventive ways 
um, this is going to be um, um, kind of worked out there. And, and, and hey, I've said from the beginning, like uh, people are going to have to be very creative in order to do very w- to, to do well in this environment, right? And, and I think that's that's kind of um, one of the you know one of the big things with it. So it's a great article. I know I've seen this uh, shared around, especially over the last couple of days with everything. So please please uh, go check it out. I've seen. I don't know if this was a list I saw, but I saw our own Musa here in Beachview was uh, listed. I'm not sure what kind of takeout options they have because I haven't seen any signs out front. But definitely a good place to support that. I will locally recommend. Uh, nice. Excellent. Katie, do you have something uh, that's an awesome thing? Yeah, um, I can't send it to you because I'm on my phone with that's the fine. thingy doodle. That's why I can look them up. Uh, so it is Zigazoo. <laughs> yes. Oh, I had this listed the other day. Yeah, I was like, let's talk about Zigazoo. So Zigazoo is supposed to be the um, the kids version of TikTok. And by kids version of TikTok, it's short video not as opposed to which, um, but they're there with the kids being at home. They're learning, uh, you know, there's more screen time. Kids are learning more with videos and being interactive with videos. And the way to do it is essentially the parents control who you friend, you know, you, your mm-hmm. kids will friend other kids that they know. Uh, and you're making videos to like, what's the weather? What's your favorite book? So it's encouraging, giving the kids a topic and encouraging them to create a video, you know, however, you know, short form video. And uh, to answer that question and to be creative and then share it with their friends and watch their friends' videos. And they were talking about, what was it, like 100,000 uh, videos in um, was it a month time? It was really, really Jeez. quick. 100,000 video uploads and downloads from the site. Yeah, in one month. So 100K videos already. What's, what's the time length? Uh, we're saying short. Sh- <clears throat> shorter short. than TikTok makes me think real short. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure because I didn't actually, I didn't download it. I don't think it's we're not says kids, so it's it. kind of weird for us to create an account and shut it out at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so or or have kids or anything. So we should have kicked this so to you, Chilla. Chilla. Yeah, we should have gave you this. Yeah, this yeah, I'll, I'll, <clears throat> I'm gonna have to give this a whirl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they were finding that like Sesame Street, uh, they looked at you know one of the things with Sesame Street and how they use education videos and they get the kids involved with the educational videos and. This is, I think it's going to be really neat for kids to use and, you know, kind of show off and be creative. It's like a different way to be creative. And it's probably hard. I, I can imagine Chilla like trying to prompt, <laughs> let's do this today or let's talk about this today <laughs> every day, especially, you know, yeah, you're... being quarantined makes it definitely difficult and, you know, trying to do our best not to go out and whatnot. It, it makes it, you definitely, Build another Lego, play another game, mm. type of thing can get it gets it's it's gotten monotonous. You can only ask, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite <laughs> animal? So many times. <laughs> this is this is this is the long run of it, right? Where it's got to be like you know, okay, we need new things. We need new things, right? <laughs> Scavenger hunts around the house for things that begin with different letters. Yeah. Man, everybody's probably real familiar with every crevice of their house by now, right? <laughs> except, except for the grudge. I got it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Matt, did you have another thing that was not uh, funny you're watching the garage? Yeah, so that it was not the corner of my garage. Uh, yeah, I, th- this is pretty uh, pretty mainstream, but that's my gimmick, so I'll go with it. And uh, I, um, about a couple months ago, I uh, grabbed the. Uh, TD Ameritrade app. I got all that big check from the uh, government a while back and was just kind of like staring at this, you know, one or two hundred bucks. Didn't know quite what to do with it. And uh, my dad's kind of into financial planning. So he said, you know, just just start an account and buy some penny stocks, basically buy stock that is priced at less than a dollar mm. per share. So you find a stock that's, you know, 19 cents a share you can buy, you know, a hundred, a hundred shares for 19 bucks. Then you could do that, you know, four or five times. And, uh, the theory being, you know, you find four or five companies that look interesting. You, you buy some of their stock. If you hit on two or three, it could be a really good time. So I did this, I started this brokerage account and I started poking around and I realized that I had downloaded the most fun mobile game I've ever played in my life. Because I'm playing with <laughs> real money, <laughs> my money, and um, you know if it goes away, fine. But I was fortunate enough. I, you know, I don't know anything about investing. I don't understand mm-hmm. 
all this data they throw at you, dividends, whatever. I know nothing. My theory was look for, you know, stocks that are in my price range, you know, whatever, 30, 40, 50 cents per share. Find a company, find out what they're making, see if I understand what it is they're doing. And if it sounds interesting, if it sounds like something that has promise, snatch up 100 shares or so. And I have, um, I don't want to brag, I have made a little bit of money um, trading stock sitting around in my house during the uh, the pandemic. And um, yeah, like I said, I mean, this is not the kind of thing that is going to, you know, cause me to never have to work another day in my life. You know, it's just, you know, it, let's put it this way. Do you like to gamble on sports? Do you miss the sports <laughs> and you can't gamble on it anymore? Here's kind of like the same kind of thing. And I'm not a, I'm not a gambler by any sense. But, um, you know, this is something to just kind of like, you know, something else to look at on your phone other than your Twitter or your Facebook app, too, which is very convenient also. Something else to click. Yeah, and, um, and, I, and, I and it is interesting. And I have found some interesting companies and some of the companies I've Investing now one's into you know thermal scanning technology, which ties into you know coronavirus and trying to like scan people as they're entering casinos and arenas that they're developing technology that will scan every single human being that passes through and would theoretically be able to detect someone who has a uh, has a has a high fever uh, before they get inside the arena or the casino or whatever. And uh, another one that's uh, launching a you know a new cartoon network that's going on there called uh, Genius Brands. I think that's the proper term but um yeah interesting stuff to look into and if it's you know i'm not certainly not blindly buying stuff just based on numbers i'm looking for companies that look interesting that are making products that look interesting and you'd be surprised how far you know your own intuition can carry you so yeah i guess if uh, if anyone's ever had the inclination or the thought um, don't be afraid take a 100 bucks if you're lucky enough to have it lying around mm -hmm. and um you know throw it at a little bit of stock and uh you never know what can happen awesome awesome it's that I, I love the idea of like just poking at something like this like it, it, and you see there is a watch app i know you're looking for things for that thing in the back of the oh, face the ameritrade watch app <laughs> yeah just yeah. what i need yeah yeah it's, it, <laughs> but i saw it when we were showing the page there uh on the video side of things so uh yeah so it's, it, it takes all the boxes doesn't it at this point so Awesome. Uh, Shilla, you have an awesome thing, and it is it is related, actually, to, to some current events, I see. Yeah, so <clears throat> I had heard Apple did some interesting things in their stores with their devices, um, and, and I really appreciate, you know, kind of how 9to5Mac covered this as, um, how did they exactly word it? Something about, you know, looters working under the guise of protests mm -hmm. um, had stolen a bunch of stuff from various Apple stores. The other thing is interesting on nine to five Mac. If you look at the ad or the, the picture, it says the, the message on the device is please return to Apple Walnut street. Mm -hmm. And the store kind of looks like our Apple Walnut Street store. I'm guessing that's a different. It does, and I don't think we did not have, we did not have looting in that neighborhood we, yeah. of Pittsburgh. I know that. Yes, um, <clears throat> but the interesting thing is, um, most of the devices that are for sale are under lock and key in the back of the store. Mm -hmm. um, so they were obviously taking the devices off the tables, um, and as soon as the devices become out of range from the store's Wi-Fi they go into a lost and stolen mode <laughs> and, and are, are bricks, um, which I thought was even more interesting. I knew they had some stuff that allowed them to kind of like rebuild the device from scratch with a couple clicks, mm -hmm. but this, this is even more interesting to me. Um, the other thing they do when those go into that mode is the app that runs on those devices. That's the, uh, the pricing app. If you've noticed, like if you walk up and you're looking, like there's an iPad there. And when you look at the the MacBook or whatever, whatever device that has the price of the device on it, the pricing app also acts as a tracking app for stolen demo models and actually has the camera and location permissions enabled by default. So pretty much the devices stolen are just pretty much big or small not very useful homing beacons. <laughs> well, I always wonder about that because it's just like, even with the attachments and the security, you're just like, it's not hard to just walk away with one of these demo phones, it seemed. 
at least. So, yeah, it, but I guess that's why they're confident in just leaving them there, right? Yeah, and I'd be interested. Do they have some kind of special thing? The the one device that that catches me off guard that has no tether, no nothing, is the Apple Pencil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, those are just laying around the store, um, with with nothing. So I, I I just thought this was interesting. It also kind of sheds the light on. Is it really worth going to the effort of trying to take one of these devices, let alone smash in the windows? And that's the thing. And so, so the article you put it says that it says that uh, Apple needs to publicize more what happens to deter robbers. Yeah, and that's a very, very interesting point because when we when we think back to the iPods of uh, of a long time ago and iPhones when they first launched, when there was the kind of theft in the subways and theft on the streets and mm-hmm. people were actually getting physically harmed for their device. Yeah. Um, Apple did quickly respond and put device and activation lock on. Um, this is just one more thing, but we've never heard of, like I've never heard about it till this point. So I, I do agree that it would be very beneficial for them to kind of talk through, you know, what happens to one of those devices. Mm-hmm. Good to see. Good to see. All right. So, while we have whatever's going on here on the planet the the, the last few months, uh, with two people escaped. <laughs> Bob and Doug is my awesome thing of the week. Uh, they um, are first, and we were calling by, they were supposed to go up, I think, last month, but that got called off, or maybe it was last week, actually. That It was last Wednesday. Because uh, I remember having a timer for it, and and I was hanging out with Krause. I was like, "Oh, like I'm, I'm going to miss the launch because we have an appointment." Uh, but uh, thankfully, it moved. And uh, Bob and Doug, the first astronauts in I think it was nine years from the Florida coast on U.S. soil, going up in a uh, SpaceX Dragon uh, capsule. So um, history made. I I watched the stream. I actually watched the stream on my phone, uh, sitting in the back of the car at at a state park <laughs> over the weekend, which was an, a fun kind of experience too. Um, so it, uh, did you any of you guys watch along with the the launch or or, or catch up on the, the footage or anything along with that? I'll tell you what is really cool is that uh, my ten year old son uh, knew about the launch. I knew what time it was going off, 3.22 in the afternoon on uh, Saturday, right? And um, was sure to, like, lock that into his brain. So, like, once he's set on something, he will uh, he will remind you immediately when it happens. But it was cool to see him get excited about it, too. The other thing that's awesome is seeing the, 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 the launch, whatever they want to call the bottom half of the rocket, um, return to base. That is I can't even imagine they even thought that was possible, but to be able to pull it off is amazing. That's not how that used to work either. I did. I'm, I'm <laughs> like, I, I remember Apollo launches when I was, <laughs> when I was your son's age, you know? Um, and, and just being so fascinated with the, with the whole thing. It's really cool. I, I mean, I, we were, um, we actually had stopped at a, a friend's house uh, and they have a, a seven year old and a five year old. Um, and they were both, uh, they were both totally into it, um, mm. and, and to me, that's a, that's that's one of the coolest things about this is that there's another generation that gets to see this stuff happen, um, and uh, and then and then old people like me can explain to them um, how much has changed uh, and how the rockets didn't used to do that. They that's, they just think of the pieces fell down in the ocean and uh, someone had to go get them. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 such a cool thing to see again. I, I'm guessing that also back then wasn't streamed in 4K. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> grainy, grainy video from Florida. But uh, you know, we did we did the best we could. Absolutely. I, I, I was imp- oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I was impressed in in the quality, in the longevity of how long you actually got the video feed for, even mm-hmm. for the rockets breaking off and landing. Mm-hmm. Like it was like right before it came back in and landed, at least in the feed that I was watching where it actually got cut and then they they actually cut to another camera. Um, quality was amazing. It was a lot of fun to watch. Um, and I, I seemed to be everywhere, which was, it was very accessible as well. Yeah. I was watching it over on Facebook and uh, that was, that was, it was, it was so cool. And watching them just use the touch screens and just mm-hmm. like 
and they let their little dragon friend go when they had zero gravity. I saw that thing for, I saw one of those for sale. I don't know if it really is for sale, but I saw a link to a, a Tesla site or some site where you could buy that shiny dragon. But I think it's a shi- the shiny dragon that you can buy at like Barnes and Noble and everywhere else. Like, the, Cause those little shiny animals are everywhere now. Mm-hmm my knockoff yeah <laughs> it, it, it was fun to see that it, and i didn't i didn't stick around to i did check in later that night because I, I know they explained they were going to stay with them more or less until they docked the next day um and i think i saw did, did somebody bump their head getting on the the space station <laughs> I, I, the, the <laughs> So, um, because there was some meme about something like the same thing happened like somewhere else, like uh, like another uh, uh, launch. It was something. a Star Wars. Well, oh, it was a Star Wars. That's right. Yes, <laughs> it was a stormtrooper. Yeah. Uh, so, I, but though the connection for that was was tremendous, and and again, I, and again, and seeing seeing the launch that I and, and this is the, the first launch I believe since uh, I got to see the one in early March down in Florida, like you're watching that feed as you're watching the rocket go too. Um, you know, even, even there with that little bit of delay, it, it's, it's so fascinating. And, and, and it, that is, it is like that new awe. It, like so many kids are going to be turned on to space from this because it's so accessible now. Um, and, and we're doing stuff and, and, and I think it's so important because people were just, you know, uh, another rocket test blew up, I think last week for, for SpaceX, right? So it's so important because people just think, oh, SpaceX, those are those rockets that keep blowing up when they're trying to land them on the ship, right? Um, like, because that's literally all you see shared sometimes, you know, you know, all the all the basics, basically the SpaceX fails and crashes, you know, but then knowing that that was, this was, I believe, the 51st rocket that has landed successfully um, out of all these launches. Uh, so this is, this is how it works. It is working. We safely t- sent two people to space with this stuff that you saw blow up all these times. It's like, how do you think we get there? We blow up a bunch of shit, so it works. <laughs> like, we know that works, you know, before somebody's on the other end of it. Uh, so, uh, no, good to, good to know that all that worked out. And uh, also weird to watch Space Force over the weekend alongside that for no real connection. But uh, <laughs> that's also fun, too. All right. So uh, with that, um, we're not going to get into any commercials or anything this week. We're just going to break format a bit here. So I, I, I thought it was really important. And the reason we have uh, uh, Mike and Matt on uh, is really kind of the journalism side of things um, and, and kind of the looking at, you know, there's been, been all of the uh, protests and everything around the protests over the last week. We are, I think, officially on day eight or nine of consistent daily action uh going on here mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. I, I i i have been you know i want to leave it to you guys the experts here but i i get this feeling that you know both good bad and indifferent like not a lot of people can hide what's going on out there with as many cameras are are in there and i and i remember an early conversation you know, maybe on that first episode of Awesome Cast ten years ago, where we talked about the prevalence of these things in our pockets and how yes. the cameras were going to completely change journalism, and this really feels like one of the biggest inflection points with it, right, Mike? Um, absolutely. Um, I don't remember uh, who to attribute this to, but uh, but uh, a, a relatively well-known um, black man—I can't remember who it is. Um, made the point that um, that nothing has changed over the years except that everyone has cameras. Um, So when when these things happen, they used to happen in the dark. Um, They, they, you know, it is easy for for whoever the bad guys are to deny um, what, what, you know, the the accounts or eyewitness accounts. But now uh, you've, you've got, you've got cameras. Everyone has one of these that they carry around with them all the time. Um, I think it is Will Smith. I think it is right. Uh, uh, but it's so there's there's no place to hide. Um, that means that means a lot of stuff for us. Uh, because you still have to be aware of, of context. Um, and and you know especially uh dealing with video stuff. Um, Matt might even have more uh, experience with that. Although. Uh, you know, the technology has changed to the, to the degree that, that the Post Gazette, that newspapers, um, if you're if you're not using this stuff, uh, you're, you're, you're really need to figure out what you're doing. Um, 
but but yeah, it, it is it has changed everything, um, and and will, it'll continue to do that. Yeah, it's uh, it's changing journalism. It's changing journalists. Um, the people who are actually out there. Yeah. Oh, Lizzie, a little bit, Matt. Matt. Uh oh. He's coming back. He's frozen on my side. Okay. All right. Just yeah, making sure yes. it was consistent. So. Uh, well, hopefully he he rolls back here in a minute. Here it looks like he was having some. He's been having some issues with the video here throughout. Let me check him on the other side. But um, um, yeah, and, and I know I know Mad and I have had this conversation. I've been uh, texting back and forth with this, and and I know it's um, you know, seeing everything consistently happen. I mean, the, kind of the you know not just the cameras, but also the ability to kind of see literally what's happening worldwide. You know, as things were just concurrently happening. Mm-hmm. across mm-hmm. especially over the weekend i mean and i don't and i don't even know what the height has been this has been like it was, it was saturday sunday or it's still just kind of consistent at this point um but uh but you know just seeing feeds that were just like literally i think he had a feed that he shared was a watch party i hope he can come back and talk to us about that was literally like four different feeds mm-hmm. from all mm-hmm. over that somebody was watching all at the same time and he could drop into the watch party and see those kinds of things um, you know, I, I, you know, I, 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 under, I, I worry that it becomes a little bit of news porn at that point, but, mm-hmm. uh, which has got to be a concern as well. Right, Mike? Um, yeah. I mean, I, in terms of what we can, we can reproduce and what we can, uh, use and, and how we use it, you still, you have to be aware of, uh, you still have to be aware of context. Um, you, you still, you know, want to have a, a, a thorough understanding of, of who you're watching, uh, who is who is uh, taping, who is streaming. Um, you know, on Saturday, uh, you know, I've been able to switch back and forth between uh, the, the stuff on, on the KDA's, KDK's um, uh, 24-hour news uh, operation, um, and they just have a feed from the helicopter going. So that's that. You know, that's helpful. But then I can also switch back and see I, a couple of friends who are protesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can I can see where they are. Um, you know, and they're offering whatever, you know, commentary it can, uh, but you know, so th- those are, those are, those are sources that I, I, I think are, are, uh, trustworthy I, or, it, you know, at least known, you, you understand where they're coming from. Um, you do kind of have to be aware of just grabbing stuff. And that's, that's not, that's an extension of, of what we've always done, you know, right. Mm-hmm. You, 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 uh, if you're approaching this in the correct way, you have to be careful about who your sources are. You have to question um, what's what you know. Question what the police account is. Question what the witness account is. Think about who these who these folks are. What their point of view is. It doesn't. It doesn't. You know. It doesn't necessarily disqualify anybody. But mm-hmm. we do uh, have to consider. Um, you know. And, and consider that that stuff. I have to be skeptical uh, of of everyone. Um, and, and, uh, you know, even when we have just this, this mountain of stuff coming at us, um, it, it, you have to, to, to really work to, to vet what, uh, what you're going to uh, put your, put some credence in. And I think, uh, Chilla, you, you dropped in the chat. I think you're right with that quote, uh, that you mentioned yeah. there. Yes. That yes, was, that is. That, that is was Will so Smith that, uh, that said the racism isn't getting worse. It's getting filmed. Um, mm-hmm. which partially becomes a, a relief until you start actually seeing it. Um, so, uh, Matt, I think we got you back on here. I see you're still on mute. There you go. There you go. You had a very important point. I'm sure we're trying to get to <laughs> before your, your Wi-Fi apparently dropped off. Yeah. Apparently my Wi-Fi just kind well, of went on. You look much better down. now. I guess I was hooked up to, I don't know what the hell's going on. I, I'm on the wrong show right now. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. It's kind of funny that I like, I, I can't like get out of my own, like, you know, out of my own, you know, upstairs office, but like, uh, I you know, I've spent the last couple of nights watching these guys and girls on their phones from Lafayette Park, you know, just like, you know, wandering around with their with their cell phones, just <laughs> perfectly clean feed coming through. And uh, yeah, sometimes I'm like, I have got to be missing something here sometimes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't quite have the full thing. Um, no, yeah, I mean, my the, the point I was starting to talk about, I'm not sure how much I said before 
I uh, glitched out on you guys, which just that like, you know, not only journalism is changing, but like the journalist is changing. So um, you not only have your mainstream outlets that are out there um, that you would expect to see your big networks, uh, you've got, you know, another tier down that are like maybe just, you know, the, these, you know, over the top, you know, kind of platforms that are not your traditional, you know, print, you know, th these are like websites turned multi, you know, you know, multiple ways of just pushing out their content. And then you've got another level level down, which are just kind of like these citizen journalists that are just out there because they want to cover the news and they've got their followers. And um, it's interesting just, you know, speaking back to uh, the stuff outside the White House just a couple of nights ago when uh, there was that big fire ranging and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there, you know, firing through Facebook Live and I'm watching, you know, one dude who's, you know, bilingual and is speaking Spanish half the time and speaking English the other half. And it's just him and his phone wandering through the park and he's right in the middle of it. And you go to another person who's kind of like maybe more of like a podcaster type who's out there and he's got his YouTube channel and his thousands of followers who are all watching in that moment. And he's at another level and you've got, you know, you could flip over and then you see the networks and they're, you know, putting out their things. And it's just, you know, uh, it, it's as, it, it seems silly, you know, but it's almost like you're just sitting there with your remote control at home and you're just flipping channels going back and forth, you know, where's this dude? And you see, you know, a puff of smoke in the background on, on, on MSNBC and you're like, oh, I wonder if that's near, what's his name? And you flip back to him to see if he's uh, anywhere near it. And, and that's literally what I was doing, you know, just a couple of nights ago. Mm -hmm. you're, you're playing a little bit of news director. I, it looked like on, on, uh, on, on watch. Yeah, a little bit of line producer too, where you're okay. just kind of like sitting next to the director and like, hey, hey, let's go to the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of that too. <laughs> there, there's an idea for a new social network app where you just pretty much mesh all people in a geographic location, kind of how they do with, with maps and Snapchat, mm -hmm. but with all live feeds and you can just circle through everybody's cameras. Well, isn't that what they were, somebody was doing that with concerts where everybody is filming with the, with the app on their phone. And then after like they could take all that footage from all the cell phones and stitch it together into one coherent uh, music video, ideally. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, like, you, you know, I, I guess you could do the same thing for news, especially something like this. That's very location based, I guess. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I, I think there were, was it, Attack of the show that used like stick cam and you could log in <laughs> via stick cam and watch multiple angles of the feed that's, while that they filmed right. live. That sounds right. There, there's a few of those where you can like pick your camera and, and do that kind of thing. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's, you know, it, we're kind of at, at, at a, uh, a big point with this. Um, of course, that there's a difference because you do have the people that are out there in the middle of things, but there's also been a lot of, concern over the journalists themselves uh matt i know you uh yeah. knew uh the first people that were attacked uh, here in pittsburgh up by the arena mm -hmm. uh i think it was around the incident with the, the infamous car fire uh police car fire that happened too yeah scary um and just kind of like one of those things where you know you're looking away for a minute and the next thing you know, you know, my wife is hollering in from the other room and she's like, Oh my God, there's, you know, Ian's getting, Ian got, Ian's in an ambulance, you know, he got beaten up and I'm like, this, are, are you serious? Yeah. You know, I, I, I've been doing the TV news thing. I had been doing the TV news thing for about 20 years or so. Uh, I, I feel like I've seen a lot of incidents of, you know, people I know, people I don't know, um, you know, running into, you know, angry people of one sort or another. And, uh, but to hear the description of what happened to Ian and Paul during that protest, uh, up near PPG paints arena was just, um, uh, it's, it's scary. And, and what made it even scarier for me is, is when they, uh, when later, um, one of the guys from the penguins, I think, uh, Kevin Acklin, he, puts out a still from the uh, security cameras and you get a look at Ian um, in that moment of confrontation. And, uh, you know, the, the first thing that strikes me is Ian's out there and it's just him. And he's just out there in his shorts and his cargo shorts and his shirt and his hat. 
and you know he's got no he's got nothing no enhanced protection for himself um knowing what they were going into Mm -hmm. um and knowing what had happened the day before and the day before that uh and that's not me criticizing ian or paul or any else who's in those um, because it's not my place to say um you know whenever i was you know managing things on the newsroom side at kdk uh, my philosophy when it came to crews in the field and their safety was that was always, it's your call. I will tell you where I hope you are. I hope you're on that person's <laughs> front lawn, but you're, if you are fearful for your safety and you do not want to be on that person's front lawn, I'm not going to tell you to, to go on that person's front lawn. If you don't want to be in this neighborhood at three o'clock in the morning, I'm not going to make you go there. Go, you know, I'll, I will, Have some Wi-Fi issues with him again. So <laughs> I, I know exactly. I mean, I, to, to see to see what happened with with Ian, um, and to, to, to hear about that, uh, you know, at the same time when I've got uh, at least a dozen colleagues who are, who are downtown um, shooting, uh, you know, shooting around the arena, photographers around the arena, uh, reporters are kind of stationed around downtown as as the group moved through, um, and that is that that is something that's different. Um, we, we run into people who try to intimidate us a lot. Mm. Uh, we run into people who want to threaten us. Um, I, I, you know, there've been a couple instances where I've kind of been concerned about, you know, my, my own personal, uh, safety, but it's, 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 it, it, most of the time it's been just blustered and, and I, I don't know what's different this time. Um, we, we were kind of talking before the show that this uh, this incident and what what has happened after it, it feels different. Um, it feels bigger. Uh, I, I made a comparison to to, to 1968 and, and the riots that occurred uh, after Martin Luther King was assassinated. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I, I think there are there are parallels there, and especially since the the reaction to this one is uh, and not just national but international. So. I, I, it's, it, it, it is what, what happened with, with, with Ian, um, it is, I mean, I mean, I know it, it does happen and certainly we're seeing a lot more videos of, of police confronting journalists in whatever cities there are. Um, again, that's not necessarily a new thing. Uh, police violence against journalists. Yeah, maybe, maybe that is. Um, but this, this is stuff that's not, that, that is, uh, I, I haven't experienced anything like like uh, what 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 Ian did, um, and that's that is a that is a, a whole other level uh, of uh, problematic. That, um, I don't know where it comes from, but it's it's definitely going to be something that, that we need to think about as, as we cover this stuff from now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it seems like from what I'm seeing, there's like sort of a safe zone established typically. And that seems to be like there, there's a journalist go over here kind of situation. And that seems to be kind of not being observed. Uh, sometimes. It, it, I mean, our photographers uh, generally will kind of wonder and because, you know, they, they want to get, um, you know, they, they want to get the nice shot of the, mm-hmm. of the, the, the graffiti police car that's on fire. Um, and, and you can't do that from two blocks away. Um, right. You know, so they're those guys, especially, uh, are, are going to are, are going to kind of put themselves in the middle of everything. Um, it makes them more vulnerable, no question. But uh, you know, as I said, the, 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 what 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 happened on Saturday is is something that uh, I I had not I had not seen before. Um, and you know, and immediately I started thinking about what. Well, okay, uh, I know this guy's working. She's working. I hope everybody's okay. You started. I, I'm I'm not working, but I'm sort of checking email. Um, at work just to see, you know, who's, who has checked in and said they're doing all right. It looks like, I mean, this is based upon my observation between what the, um, it, it's with the violence with the, uh, journalists and the writers and the j- journalists and the police is they are going after the video end of things. They're not going mm-hmm. after the photo guys and gals. They're going after the video people. And it's like, What's what's your angle? Because you still have all. Because I think they're trying to like get, even though it's there's so much with quote unquote fake news, fake news in every station. Yes. But 
it, it's they're trying to get they're trying to stop that message from getting out to the news stations and discredit all of the eyewitness videos that we're seeing on social media and I mean that's just my observation with things but it seems like I, I don't I honestly don't know what the point is um, mm -hmm. you know we're we're talking about how ubiquitous uh, these things are now um, you know if you if you if you're trying to to shut down like official accounts. Um, you're, you're, you're trying to keep the, the, the Post Gazette uh, or the Trib or KDK away, or you know, what, what does that accomplish? Mm -hmm. You still have another several thousand people who are who are are, are, are taping everything that you do. Um, mm -hmm. So there, there's there's a lot of this that doesn't that doesn't make sense. Um, I, I guess you you, you kind of feel like they're whoever they is are, are, are trying to. Uh, understand and cope with these changes as well, um, just as as we're grappling with the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Matt, I think we got you back on there. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. Um, I, I just and there was one one key point I just want to make before the Wi-Fi kicks me off of this show again. <laughs> it's just that um, I mean any any station manager or news director in any TV newsroom in the country right now. It doesn't matter how big of a market they are. Um, doesn't matter how close to this they feel they are. Um, if they haven't already, they need to be looking at their safety precautions for their employees when they're out in the field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They need to be looking at their building security, even if it's as simple as just the GM and, you know, a handful of people walk around the perimeter of the station grounds. Um, you need to look at this stuff. You need to anticipate what could potentially happen and what could, you know, come to your doorstep. Um, you need to be thinking about helmets. You need to be thinking about protective gear uh, for your crews out in the field. You need to be thinking about um, having, you know, professional security um, escorting your crews around the field. I know that the networks are doing things like that. I know. Mm -hmm. MSNBC and CNN are definitely doing that, um, especially in the larger cities, um, smaller markets where they've got these um, MMJs, uh, the quote unquote, the one man bands, um, kids, you know, which sounds derogatory for me coming, you know, old, crusty, new people <laughs> like me and Mike, kids, kids in market 300 straight out of college who just want that first job, who are willing to lug around their own camera and all the room here and report the story alone by themselves mm -hmm. going to places they aren't familiar with. That's dangerous. And, and look, I mean, the business is going in that direction and I don't know if that genie is ever getting put back into the bottle, but there's gotta be steps that you take to at least, you know, educate and inform your crews and prepare them for the worst when it could happen. And, and mm -hmm. getting back to Mike's point about just photojournalists, um, you know, I've met some photojournalists who are very careful and will not take a risk. And I've met some crazy people who put a <laughs> camera in their hands and they will climb over six hills to get a shot. Yes. Um, yes. Some of these people are just wired that way. And, you know, they will put they will put themselves in positions maybe they shouldn't be. But you know what? If when you've been doing it for 20, 30 years, some of these guys and you've gotten away with it 99 percent of the time, you're gonna keep doing it you know mm -hmm. these, you know there there is that you know feeling of i don't want to say invincibility but you know that feeling of you know i know what i'm doing out here you know and i know mm -hmm. you know the best way to get out of that so it's just you know like so many other things right now it's a time for self-reflection and it's a time to you know take a look at your own house metaphorically speaking and figure out what needs to be addressed and what can be done better Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. any other, if anybody is looking, whether they be a employee journalist, a, a citizen journalist, do, you know, these things are not stopping. Uh, we're going to be having protests until, you know, until <laughs> I would say until things are solved, but I know that is an impossibility at this point uh, or unrealistic, maybe expectation at this point. Um, but uh, uh, you know, these will be happening tomorrow. I know they're happening through the weekend here in Pittsburgh. Do you have any tips for those people that are going out there, whether it be for safety or whether it be, you know, whether at an aspect of what to expect if they're like, hey, these are happening. I need to go do my part and capture this. Well, I mean, just one thing real quick is, um, and one thing I've seen a lot 
Um, you saw it when when uh, Omar from CNN got arrested. Mm -hmm. um, and members of his crew got arrested, and I've seen it with other um, crews out in the field, live, um, as police are trying to, however you want to state it, impose their will, enforce whatever rules they think they need to enforce on people. Um, you'll uh, one one phrase I keep hearing these reporters saying to the police is just simply, "Where do you want me?" You know, just tell me where you want me. Because look, I mean, we're pretty flexible people you know we don't need to usually don't need to be in this very spot to get the story mm -hmm. you know sometimes you can be you know 10 feet away so if it mm -hmm. if it's better that i'm you know over here 10 feet away then then so be it so i mean not everything has to be a confrontation yeah. um yeah. where you're where you've got to stand your ground i mean you know there's you gotta you know where do you want me i mean i i heard you know just like, what do you want us to do where do you want me to go Mm -hmm. You know, and if mm -hmm. they're not willing to tell you, then just keep asking. And, yeah. you know, the other thing, too, that's that's been a key for a lot of these journalists that have uh, run into trouble is just like having those credentials front and center, visible, um, not tucked inside, you know, not like the lanyard and then tucked inside your shirt, you know, out front and center, visible uh, so everybody knows um, who you that are. That doesn't even seem to down. that doesn't even seem to help anymore. Yeah. Some, sometimes, no, sometimes yeah. it doesn't. We were able to, to prepare for uh, the, the Antoine Rose verdict um, mm -hmm. a little bit. This obviously, you know, you don't you don't prepare for the uh, for the for the, the death in Minneapolis. You don't prepare for what it's just it, it, that that sort of happens organically. Um, but you know, here's the thing: you're the trial. We know this is coming. Uh, we we had uh, for the reporters, uh, photographers who were going to be out. We had like a neon vests that say press yeah. on them. Um, you know, it's, it, it is, uh, and, and some people, uh, were, we, we, did, we tracked down helmets for, for a few people too, depending on where they were going to be. Um, I know that's not a practical thing for everyone. It's not a practical thing necessarily for, a, a you know, a, a, a smaller operation. Um, and if you're, if, if, if you're just out doing it on your own, um, you know, that, that can be the, 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 a tough thing to, to, it's an expense and stuff you got to track down. Um, to those guys, I would say just, I mean, really, it, it's, it's easy kind of to be myopic and, and focus on what you're shooting, mm -hmm. but you really got to make sure you're watching everything. Um, watch where the police are. Watch, you know, is, are, are, is there a group of people that's especially angry or, or that, that kind of sticks out in some way? Um, you know, my, my, it, it feels like a lot of the stuff that happened on Saturday was uh, a a group that was that was mostly separate from the, the the protesters you know that that's stuff that you you know if you if you notice that and you're like okay this is weird and if 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 you feel that if you sense that you're probably right um and it's 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 best to, to kind of to heed those instincts um and 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 make sure you give those give those folks a, a, a wide berth I get this. I've never been in this situation. I, I've never been at a at, at this mass scale of a protest uh, kind of situation or, or these kinds of. I, I ran from a tear gas once. I, that, okay, it was an ICP <laughs> gathering show uh, in Toledo one time. That went bad. But other than that, <laughs> other than that moment of running uh, um, twenty years ago, uh, you spill your fago. <laughs> it was already spilled it was during the concert uh okay. everywhere uh but but i feel like uh you know i remember going to concerts and you know i would always be in the mosh pit near the mosh pit and there was always like you kind of have that head on a swivel kind of feeling a uh, uh, peripheral uh, uh idea of okay that guy over there is bad news you know you know he's gonna jump in and swing in and you know at people doesn't care you know uh, that kind of thing like it, i i not being in a lot of that situation, that feels like that kind of vibe when you're out in the middle of something like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that's that's the kind of stuff you have to be that you, you want to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I, I mean, I, I'm I'm the, I'm one of the people who catches the stuff that's filed and posted on the site, and, and yeah. so I'm 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 not out there uh, these days. But but yeah, uh, it, you know, if if you, if there's something. If there's something that says those those police officers are, are are you know they're massing over here and you have this group of uh, these guys don't look like everybody else and they're kind of huddled over here you know just 
if it if it feels weird, mm-hmm. um, it's 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 worth being careful. Yep, absolutely. Well, Mike, Matt, thank you so much for coming on, having this conversation with us. Um, you know, I hope I hope it helps people kind of understand what's going on a little bit more uh, from the ground level, and uh, you know, and those that are going out. Hopefully, it didn't inspire anybody to go out there. Uh, and being unsafe if they weren't already, but uh, you know, at least on on this side. Uh, but uh, you know, but I'm glad that 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 we can hopefully help with that. So, uh, Mike, of course, you are with the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, mm-hmm. um, and you write some fantastic newsletters over there. Please, uh, uh, where can people sign up for that? Uh, hit the homepage. There's a newsletters button. If you subscribe to PG Feed, um, that is me. Almost every single day, um, I do the weekend events newsletter too. Um, even when there are no weekend events, as it turns out, I can <laughs> I can still write a weekend events newsletter. So you've gotten really uh, good at that now. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I practiced the last couple months. So yeah, yeah. Matt Carlins, he is uh, not in the TV news biz, but he is in the podcasting biz now uh, with his <laughs> show that he does on Thursday nights. That's right. We're doing um, the Listen to Your Parents podcast. We've been uh, doing ever doing it ever since the uh, the lockdown started. It's been uh, interesting. Um, just hanging out, talking to parents um, about what it's like getting through this uh, crazy thing. Feels a little trivial right now, but um, uh, we'll uh, be back on uh, Thursday night uh, to live stream another episode and uh, talk about what's going on in our world. And uh, if anyone out there is looking for a crusty old news person. Um, Hey, I got time on my hands, so look me up. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We'll get you on the rounds. Uh, and Katie. Katie's a, Hi. <laughs> Katie's up there. Oh, man, I had that learned up. <laughs> uh, You're still giving your updates, including leggings and sock, cactus socks. I think I saw the, uh, the, today. Punny socks. <laughs> From your or what? My punny socks. Your punny socks. My uh, cat pun socks. For your, uh, for your trips. Uh, I, uh, where can people find you out there? Uh, Kate Marie PGH on Instagram mostly, most most of my stuff there. Fantastic, and John Chachilla, Chilla on the Twitter, John Chachilla on the Facebooks. There you go. Uh, so uh, we are going to kick over to something I record with Chachi on his uh, YouTube show, uh, put a pickle on it to complete for something completely different. And uh, until then, uh, you guys check this out, and we'll see you guys next week. Hey guys, we are here through the time warp on the Awesome Cast. I know I'm. Sure, we're coming from a great conversation that we're having on Wednesday night, but uh, I, I didn't want to uh, pass up an opportunity uh, that uh, uh, Chachi had a day off, and we never get to have him on the awesome cast. So I wanted to at least honor that, even though we're jumbling things up because of things are crazy in the world right now. But uh, Chachi is with us on the line on his rare, rare day off. What? Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. It is 2.35 p.m., I'm typically 25 minutes away from going to launch. <laughs> and I have nothing to do today. To be clear, like you, you serve a, uh, you serve a very West coast uh, clientele currently. So that's, that's, that's the biggest issue. Yeah. My whole thing. I am, I, I live on West coast time. So the, uh, the California office is getting in at eight o'clock. I'm logging in at 11 to meet their needs. Um, I'm not sure that we're doing it on the show this week. We, you, you will know by now. Uh, but I kind of wanted to ask, and I, I didn't prep you for this, but uh, I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the project you've been working on for the people out there. I know we mention it every week to give you guys, you give you a shout out to go check it out. But uh, I, I wanted to talk, do you have an awesome thing from this project for Put a Pickle on it? Like something that's helped you along the way, uh, getting this off the ground or something? Uh, not really helped. It's the entire thing is shocking to me. Mm -hmm. So, and I was going to, I was going to wait, but this, this fits, it will just go right into it. But so this whole thing started as a joke. Mm -hmm. I was in the kitchen. um, I was making breakfast and I saw the jar of pickles in my way. And I started, I just, I don't know if you ever get bored and just start singing songs about everything you're doing, but I grabbed the pickles to move them out of the way so I can get something behind it. And I started singing a song about putting pickles on eggs. And that's when I text you. Mm-hmm. Because we're at the point in our relationship where you're creating content and I'm creating content. And I have ideas for content that I necessarily don't want to create. 
but I think someone should. So I'll send them to you. Because <laughs> if anything, you're going to be the one who creates the content, mm-hmm. and I'm just going to enjoy it and laugh. Yeah, yeah. And most of the time, thankfully, most of the time, you don't take me seriously. <laughs> I'm the filter. I'm the quality filter, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, I, I've come up with hands full, a handful of ideas. Some of them good. Most of them not good. And it just happens. And then I sent you this idea. You gave me the standard response. I don't even remember what it is at this point. Hmm. And then I'm like, okay. And then I told Chris. And she laughed and thought I was joking. And then I tweeted about it or something. And there was more people who were like, yes, you should do this. And so one day I was out. I made a list of five objects the first for the first week. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to film this. And then we're done. And then the internet started watching it and everyone started sending me suggestions. And at the end of the first week, I had 60 some suggestions. And I'm like, all right, well, we're going to do this now. (laughs) And that's it. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, I I have 25 episodes filmed, uh, 12, 22 of them have posted. So, so, and this is, you know, this is just, you have a food item, you put a pickle on it, it's a simple thing, but I feel like this is, like, you know, there's there's shows like this. There's like these food shows, our, our friend Dave Potter, uh, uh, that that's in our chat room, uh, he's been doing, like, these kind of taste test videos, and I kind of jokingly sent him a video entry one time, to, <laughs> and I meant to do one for you, but then you came up with something even better. So, like, I, I love that this has become, and this may only be in our circle, or our extended social media circle, and, and that's fine. I mean, you have like last I checked, seventy four uh, subscribers on the Twitter or on the YouTube. I know you moved to the Facebook. Like this is just a a fun thing to entertain us, and that's okay, kind of thing. It yeah. Feels. So the the goal originally was because it was mainly on YouTube, and and the way this whole project has worked is from the beginning. Each week we improve just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Not a lot, just a little bit. Like the first week, no intro, no music, nothing. Yeah. Uh, I I don't even remember if we had credits the first week. But so and and, and we this is you. I have not. I really haven't helped. I, I really no, no, haven't it, helped. It, it, I'm t- when I say we, I refer to it. I refer to the the show in a royal sense. So anyone who I talk to about it gets included in the circle and it becomes we i don't it's not me it's it wouldn't exist if it weren't for the audience Mm -hmm. so it's just we so the first week nothing just the video posted to youtube moved on second week intro page uh basic music credit basic credits page uh and then a friend whose son has always supported Anything I do, he, he's he was there at most of the Chachi plays. Uh, he's just he likes me because I am a child at heart, and we play video games together whenever we're together. It's just one of those things. He's really artistic, and so he drew an intro, like the intro page that we use. He drew, he came up with, he designed it. We had uh, video chat meetings about it. Mm-hmm. And then he sent me what he, well, his mother sent me what he drew. I had her scan it in. He sent it. I use it as the intro. Um, that was, that was last week. Uh, last week I sent it off to a graphic designer who I'm working with to actually design a logo and actual show graphics and had her digitize it. Oh. And I mean, it's a slow thing. And that's the way it's going to be. Little by little, we are just improving little things. Uh, I, I found the original text, by the way, that I received. Did you? you. I did. I did. Back on uh, May 1st at 11 a.m. Put a pickle on it. A short show at an interval to be decided in which I eat different foods with a slice of dill pickle on top. The food could be anything from standard chicken nugget to a peanut butter cup, which I think you've done both of those by now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Those were, yeah. And my response was simply pickles and mayonnaise. Yes. Because <laughs> that is an old Newgrounds video yeah. that we used to watch yeah. back in the day. And that was the, it was, was it Idiots Anonymous? Was that the old it show? Was, it, it was Idiots oh, Anonymous. God, that's got to be somewhere. That's somewhere on the internet, I'm sure. 
Uh, it, was, oh, it, was, it, was, it was flash animation at the time. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and then there you go. I mean, I think I brushed it off because the next picture I sent you was the GameCubes that I let you borrow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, like I said, sometimes my ideas, they, they are okay. And sometimes they're not. Mm. And then sometimes I go through it anyhow. And now we're here. So, so uh, I, I feel like as I watch this, you, I, I, you know, for a while, I, I drug you along on this uh, uh, show concept we did for the Pittsburgh Foundation called Unsung, uh, where where we made you host for a while. Uh, so, yeah. like, I feel like I feel like those hosting skills that you developed over the sixty some episodes of that we did came in handy because your your mannerisms and hosting your pause. <laughs> I, I crack up every time it's like and then we put a pickle on it that's right <laughs> yeah well and that's the thing like even from the beginning I, i've acted like it was already a show mm -hmm. i i you have i i went into it they like on the belief that it was already a show there were already a, there was already an audience yes. and they were already playing along uh-huh so, like, it was like a, a normal game show where they say the tagline, it's like call and response. I, I say I say the call, the audience has the response, and then we move on with the show. <laughs> Regardless of the fact that it was episodes one through five, mm -hmm. and when I was recording those episodes, no one had seen it. Yeah, yeah. You got you to gotta plant the studio audience for the first few. Yeah. So, so, I, so go ahead. I, I was going to say the only people who saw this before we were launched it, before we launched it, you got, I want to say you got the coal ranch episode. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as I, I finished it and uh, executive producer, the wife was out of town when this happened. <laughs> like she was not even home. She was out of town for work. And so uh, she requested that I do the lemon because we had lemons around. And she was trying to get rid of them. And she was like, here, you should put a pickle on a lemon. I'm like, okay. So, I mean, that worked out. So she got that episode um, sent to her as soon as it was finished. And then based on the responses of just those two, I knew it was something that I had to do. Awesome. You 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 already, uh, uh, three weeks into this thing, four weeks into this thing, already had a, a run-in with uh, your platforms, it seems. Yeah, so uh, the first couple weeks, uh, the first week or the first, the first week was the first two weeks are te were test weeks. Um, I use the old adage that you and I came up with when doing any content creation: give it ten episodes. If you still want to do it after the ten episodes, then you start gathering an audience. Mm -hmm. Then you can start pushing it. And so, and that's what I did. The first 10 episodes were posted. People were watching it. I mean, we had, the first episode had 100 views within three days. And just in my circle, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm thinking, oh, 10, 12 people are going to watch it. And that's this. on YouTube. That's not nearly as easy on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was on you, YouTube. You probably would have had 100 easy if you just posted it on your personal Facebook, to be clear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so after the first couple of weeks, I realized that we had a show. People were going to watch the show. And it was for all audiences. Mm -hmm. And I'll get to that in a moment. Um, so, and I'm not talking local. This is, it, it may be my circle, but it's worldwide at this point. Mm -hmm. So after the first two weeks, I'm like, all right, well, if we're going to build an audience, we're going to build an audience. And I'm like, so one of the things that we need is a custom URL on YouTube. Which is a crock of bull, by the way. So, if you haven't done it, in order to get a custom URL on YouTube, you need a few things. You need custom art. Uh, well, not custom. You need art. You need a watermark and you need a banner for the page. Mm -hmm. Then you need an icon for your page. Fine. That's easy enough. I'll throw something together and paint. We'll move on. Done. Uh, you, have to, you have to exist for a month. Fine. Nothing I can do about that. We'll just wait. And then the last one. You have to have 100 subscribers. That's the difficult part. Yeah, yeah. Because you actually have to go out, you have to grind, you have to advertise, and you have to beg. Yeah. 
that's fine. I have begged people on the internet for things for years. I have no problem doing that. Raised, so raised a lot of money for charity that way, actually. Over yeah, over fifteen thousand dollars over the years. So I'm okay with begging on the internet. So I do that, and we're getting close. And then uh, to buck the system a little bit, I started getting all of these follows from the Sorgatron Media family, which YouTube took as spam. Sorry about and, that. Sorry I'm not about worried that. about it. It's not your fault. They're legitimate accounts if their algorithm and would just And they're all still subscribed, too. I don't understand. Like, they, they, right. they didn't unsubscribe them for me. I'm still in all the systems. Yeah. So, uh, YouTube read those as spam, mm -hmm. uh, removed those, and about 10 others. Oh. So, it took us from, like, 83 subscribers back down to, like, 68 which ultimately upset me. I'm like, you know what? If you don't want me to use your platform, just be like, hey, we don't want you on our platform. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. We'll relocate. Uh, everyone, most of the people are watching on Facebook anyhow. Mm -hmm. So I will take the show to where the audience is. Yep. So that's what I did. I created a Facebook page. I transferred all of the, the custom graphics over. Uh, I uploaded all of the videos, which I thought was going to get me shut down. Mm -hmm. But I load, uploaded all of the videos, um, and within the first week, like it's been a week, we have 120 followers on Facebook. Uh, the views are 10 times what they were on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the show is still there, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Good to have it there for for the Twitter sharing and everything, of course. So, mm -hmm. so I I love this because this is like a culmination of like all the little things that we've done together over the years. Uh, that's thrown and and it's helping you. I imagine this is helping you with your uh lockdown quarantine situation over there as you're working from home. Uh, you know, it it does help. Um, it gives me something to do other than I was spending an absorbent amount of money on Lego. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm not talking like little Legos. Like I'm, I was buying like hundred dollar Lego sets Jeez. every week, and I'm like, okay, let's stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> when I create something on my own, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and so yeah, when this came up, I'm like, you know what? Let's do this. And then I mean, the fishing helped. That gets me out of the house and away from people. But yeah, yeah for the most part, the content creation works. Um, this this works a lot better than the game journey mm -hmm. um, because fun fact here's a thing I learned on the second attempt of the game journey no one reads anything on the internet anymore <laughs> we you're saying the numbers aren't great over there <laughs> no they're not at all no yeah. one reads articles especially about video games mm -hmm. No one wants to read a review about a video game. They want to watch people play the video game and then talk about it, which I don't want to do. <laughs> I won't write you a thousand words on any video game on the planet with no problem. I do not want to be put on the spot playing in that video game. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah I mean, I'm going to keep doing it. And it's going to get the same amount of attention that it's always gotten. Mm -hmm. But the audience is in video. Yes. I'm going to be in video. We'll put our pickle on our game journey. Uh, Chachi, yeah. where can people go check out everything out? Uh, on Twitter at Chachi Says, on Facebook. Actually, you know what? Just go to putapickleonit.net. <laughs> Wait, you got that? Yeah, dot uh, com was already taken. It'll take you to the Facebook page. Okay. There's not an actual website. It just takes you to the Facebook page. Fantastic. Hey, 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 perfect to get things going, right? So, yes. <laughs> fantastic. Go check it out. Uh, supporting our, our friends here on the awesome cast. Uh, go check out Put a Pickle on it. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.